Ledger lock fasteners are designed specifically for attaching a deck ledger to the house. The thick, hardened steel shank resists the shear loads demanded of this critical application, while the aggressive threads are perfectly placed to provide the most engagement to the rim board of the house. As with all lock line fasteners, there is no pre-drilling, saving you both time and money over the conventional method. The ledger lock flathead fastener comes in two lengths. The traditional 3 and 5 eighths is for single ledgers, and the 5 inch version for double ledgers and thicker applications. Remember when selecting the length, the point of the fastener should protrude through the inside of the rim for inspectability. The ledger lock flathead includes two new features versus the original hex head design. A wide washer head that can be driven flush to the ledger surface, allowing for easier joist hanger placement, and the Torx T-Tap drive system with its patented stability button for maximum bit fit and wobble-free installation. Ledger locks are supported by an evaluation report as well as third-party application-specific testing. A technical bulletin with an IRC code-compliant fastening schedule can be found in every box. And of course, it's approved for use in treated lumber, including ground contact ACQ. Ledger locks are available in a variety of lengths and package sizes and always include a free bit. You can find them at your local lumber yard or home center. Number nine, the next generation of MatchFit dovetail clamps. With anti-pivot technology and the all new X-pad, giving you hold down and inline pressure at the same time. What? We already broke the mold with the first generation of dovetail clamps by creating a work holding system with just a router bit. Now you can apply clamping pressure in two directions with just one clamp and no expensive T-Track. The included X-pad slips right over the standard cap, applying downward and horizontal pressure simultaneously. Combined with stops, you can glue up long parts without long clamps. Just this little guy. It's like two clamps in one. Crazy, right? You can use it to make a tall fence on your table saw. Or as a straight line jig. Use it on the drill press to secure fences, stops, or material. Or you can use it on the miter table. Use a spacer to secure material from a distance, leaving the top unobstructed for flattening, template routing, or CNC work. Want to clamp round stock? No problem. The Dovetail Clamp AP's coil spring keeps the arm of the clamp in place, defying gravity. When you're setting up a large glue up or swapping out parts for repetitive processes, the arm won't drop down and get in your way. The Dovetail Clamp AP is also longer than the original, giving you a full eight and a half inches of clamping capacity for larger projects. No other system gives you the flexibility to create your own tracks where and when you need them. For jigs, fixtures, and assembly, there really is no substitute. Number eight, the PortaCube STR's compact footprint is uniquely designed for portable storage of your miter saw. And when fully expanded, it will provide up to seven feet of working surface. Using the universal tool mounts, almost any size miter saw can be attached to the PortaCube STR's unique rotating base. Heavy duty 10 inch wheels and a retractable locking handle makes moving simple and easy. When you're ready to get to work, your miter saw easily rotates from its stored position and locks securely in place. Side extension wings and adjustable tool tables raise and lock into position. And adjustable feet can be used for leveling on uneven surfaces. With the PortaCube STR fully expanded, you are ready to start making cuts with your miter saw. When cutting is complete, rotate your saw back into storage and the PortaCube STR transforms into a seven foot work surface, perfect for working on additional projects you may have. When your work is finished, simply return the PortaCube STR to its compact size, raise the retractable handle and easily roll it back into storage, ready for your next project. Number seven. One of the main purposes of this tool is to help you install crown molding. Crown molding can be one of the most difficult, frustrating jobs out there. 
I've seen pros make messes of it, let alone do it yourselfers. And we're here today to show you something that's going to make your life a little bit easier. What sets the saw set apart is that it's unlike a standard protractor. Its scale has been calibrated specifically to work with your miter saw. If there is an angle you have to cut, saw set will make it perfect. Let's get into the job. First you find your wall angle by placing a T-bevel on the inside or outside corner. We're doing an inside corner here. Then place your T-bevel on the saw set tool. It's as simple as that. Now there are two ways of cutting crown molding on a miter saw. One of them is on the flat or other is up on the fence like we have here. Set your saw to the degree you locate it on your saw set. Place the molding with a detailed or small cove on the upper side of the fence. Follow your saw's safety manuals and cut. The first step of cutting crown molding on the flat is to, is to determine the spring. To do so, we need to take a sample of our crown molding and place it up against our guide right here. We can hold it up on the 38, and as you see, it doesn't line up. Move it over to the 45, and it's a perfect fit. So we now know that our crown molding here is a 45 degree spring. So we don't use this chart, we use this one right here. We take our bevel and our saw set, line it up, and we reference it on our guide, and we now know how to set our saw. Now that we have our setting, we're ready to cut on the flat. First thing we need to do is find the table setting. The table setting is 33.9. So we move our setting, 33.9. Next step is setting the vertical setting, which is 29.1. And we run it down, 29.1. So now that we have our setting, our angle here and here, we're ready to go. And all that's left is a perfect fit. Number six, introducing the plate joiner. Slim and ergonomic. With its cast aluminum front body, it's designed for making strong plate joints with efficiency, accuracy, convenience, speed, and comfort. The PJ7000 has non-marring rubber inserts engineered to prevent material from slipping. The powerful 5.6 amp motor delivers 11,000 RPM for quick, precise cutting. The rack and pinion vertical fence system is engineered for accurate adjustments with three positive stops at zero degrees, 45 degrees, and 90 degrees. It has six depth settings with one touch stops and common biscuit sizes. The double insulated PJ7000 also has a toolless blade cover and shaft lock for easy blade changes, quick changing bag. Number five. Some of you might be familiar with our red aluminum squares, which we've been machining for almost 15 years. These aluminum squares are excellent for assembling cabinetry and furniture, as well as machinery setup. Our new stainless steel squares feature a thinner, hardened stainless steel blade, which makes them excellent for measuring, marking, as well as machinery setup. Let's take a look at how they're made. Here's what the square looks like completely disassembled. Let's start by just looking at the square itself. As you'll notice, it's a single piece of metal. Both the base and the blade are all one piece. A one piece square is likely to be more durable over its lifetime. It doesn't mean it's any more or less accurate than a two piece square, but it's just gonna keep the angle that it was manufactured at. Our squares are originally lasered out on an industrial laser and then all the critical edges are machined to ensure that it's perfect. The scales, or the cheeks, are pinned using two hardened quarter-inch dowels to ensure that even after years of getting knocked around the shop, that those scales don't get knocked out of position. And then everything is held together with four stainless steel socketed cap screws. Let's take a closer look at some of the features of the 1282 SS. Notice all the notches in the blade. There are small notches every sixteenth of an inch and a large diamond cut out every one inch. These notches are for your pencil to make it easier to draw or scribe a line parallel to the edge of your workpiece. They're particularly sized well for a mechanical pencil, so if I wanted to draw a line two and a half inches from the edge, I just put, drop my pencil in the two and a half inch notch, pull it towards me, and I automatically get a line perfectly parallel, perfectly straight, and exactly two and a half inches from the board's edge. Next, take a look at the engravings. These engravings are more than skin deep. They're laser engraved with a custom-made fiber laser, 
and it's called an annealed marking. And it's about 10 thousandths of an inch deep, or about the thickness of a business card. And the only way those would ever wear off, which they really can't, is if you used a grinder or a file. Number four. Number three. two Number one. 